In this video, we will introduce the concept of variables. A variable is a letter which is used to represent a number. The two advantages for doing this are, we can use the variable as a placeholder for some unknown quantity, for example in the sentence, let a be an integer, or we can assign a value to that variable, and instead of having to write a number every single time, particularly a very large number, we can instead use the variable name. To translate the sentence, let a equal 359, we use the colon equals operator, seen here, to indicate that we are defining the variable a to take on the value of 359. Here are some examples of some different mathematical properties that can be expressed using variables as placeholders. Like we saw in the previous slide, we can use variables to define certain mathematical ideas. For example, let's define multiplication using variables. Let n be a natural number, and let a be an integer. Then the multiplication of n times a is equal to adding a to itself n times. If we assign the value of 4 to a, then n times a is 4 added to itself n times. Now let's use variables to introduce two new types of statements. The first is called a for all statement. A for all statement means that some rule or property holds for all numbers of a particular type. We sometimes use an upside down capital A as a stand in for the words for all. Remember that the natural numbers are all of those integers that are bigger than zero. If we write that sentence using our for all statement, we can write, for all natural numbers n, n is greater than or equal to 1. Here are two more examples of using for all statements to represent mathematical ideas. Now that we know how to use for all statements and variables, we can introduce several important properties that all integers share. Two of these properties deal with addition, two deal with multiplication, and one combines the two operations together. The first property of the integers is known as the commutativity of addition, which states that for any two integers, a and b, that a plus b is equal to b plus a. Essentially, the commutativity of addition says that the order in which you add integers does not matter. The second property is known as the associativity of addition which states that for any integers a, b, and c, that a plus the quantity b plus c is equal to the quantity a plus b plus c. Essentially, the associativity of addition says that the order in which you add groupings of integers does not matter. The third property of the integers is the commutativity of multiplication, which states that for any two integers a and b, that a times b is equal to b times a. Like with addition, this property states that the order of the multiplication of two integers does not matter. The fourth property is the associativity of multiplication, which states that for any integers a, b, and c, that a times the quantity b times c is equal to the quantity a times b times c. Like with addition, this property states that the order in which you multiply groups of integers does not matter. The final property allows us to combine the operations of multiplication and addition and is known as the distributive property. This property states that a times the quantity b plus c is equal to the quantity a times b plus the quantity a times c. The final type of statement we'll introduce in this video is the there exists statement, which is a bit different from a for all statement. Remember that a for all statement holds for all numbers of a particular type. However, a there exists statement holds for at least one number of a particular type. There may be more than one solution, but all we know from a there exists statement is that there is at least one number that satisfies the suggested condition. Consider the following example. Let b be a natural number. Then there exists an integer negative b such that b 
plus negative b is equal to zero. In this particular case, negative b is the only integer that satisfies this condition. Try determining if the following there exist statements are true or false, and give a number or numbers that justify your answer. Here are our solutions to these three there exist statements. Were your answers the same as ours? To get some more practice with for all and there exist statements, try determining if the following statements are true or false, and try to come up with a number or numbers that justify your answer. Here are our solutions to these statements. Remember that for some of these statements, there may be more than one correct answer.